Hello girls and friends, it's Jennifer, and today we are going to learn all about electricity. So I want you to think, what are some things around you that use electricity? For me, I have this iPad I'm recording on to use electricity. My lamp, you can kind of see behind me, that uses electricity. My phone, I made breakfast a little bit ago and I got my bread at the refrigerator. That uses electricity. I cooked my toast in the toaster, also uses electricity. So many things that we use every day use electricity. And think, how would your life be different if you didn't have electricity? What would change about your day? Now, have you ever thought about what electricity is? What's happening that makes a light turn on? Or what happens to make a toaster heat up? So today we're gonna to talk about what's happening and do a couple of little experiments to show you how electrical circuits work. But first, let's talk about what electricity is. To explain electricity, first we need to talk about atoms. This image that you're looking at right now is a model of an atom. Everything in the entire universe, you, me, a pencil, an iPad, everything is made of atoms. Atoms are the tiny, tiny building blocks that make up everything we know. Atoms are made up of things called protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons make up the center of the atom, which is called the nucleus. The electrons, they orbit or they circle around the nucleus. The way electrons orbit around the nucleus allows them to easily move between surfaces. So electricity is just electrons moving. If you've ever touched another person or a doorknob and gotten a little shock, that's from electrons moving around. That is called static electricity. Another example of static electricity is when you go down a slide and your hair stands up on end. That happens because as you went down the slide, your hair lost electrons to the slide. So electrons moved from your hair and into the slide. Now when you lose electrons, it means that all of those hairs now have a positive charge. And when they all have a positive charge, they want to push away from each other, so they fly up. So that's static electricity. But the kind of electricity that flows through our lights and things like that is called current electricity. Moon uses a battery, light bulb, and a wire as our example of current electricity. Every battery has a positive and a negative side. I just explained how when your hair loses electrons, it has a positive charge. So this side of the battery with the little bump is the positive side, and it has less electrons than the negative side over here, the flatter side. So all the electricity from the negative side is going to want to flow over to the side with less electrons. So to make that flow of electrons happen, we need to create a circuit to connect the negative side of our battery to the positive side. Now the word circuit sounds a lot like the word circle. We're basically making a circuit. To create the circuit, I'm gonna hold one side of my wire against the negative side of the battery. The other side of the wire is going to touch the light bulb and the metal part of the light bulb is touching the positive side of the battery. And you can see as I touch the wire to the light bulb, it lights up but as soon as I break that circuit, it turns off again. To make my circuit a little more complex, I've put my battery in this battery holder and I have these clamps that I can connect to my wires to connect to my battery more easily. These are all supplies that you can find in electric circuit building kits that are made for kids. I also have a holder for my light bulb to easily connect my wires there. You'll notice here that I need to have metal touching metal for the electricity to flow. To add another step to my circuit to make it more like a light that you can find in your home, I'm going to add a switch. You'll notice here that I'm being careful to make sure that the metal of my wires is touching the metal of the switch. My wire is covered in blue plastic, which is an insulator, meaning that electrons don't want to flow through it. So if I connect my wire where it's blue and plasticky to the switch, the electricity won't flow through it and the light won't turn on. Metal, however, is a conductor and conductors are what electrons like to flow through. So I wanna have metal touching metal. So now that I have my switch in place, I can turn my light off and on. When I lift the switch up, I am breaking the circuit so that electric current cannot flow through. When I put the switch down, I have metal touching metal again, and the electric current can continue on to the light bulb. Light bulbs aren't the only thing that we can power with our battery. Here I have a little motor and I made this little
Now I'm going to make a super tiny circuit using these small round batteries and these LED lights. LEDs are really fun because they come in all of these awesome colors. And these batteries and LED lights are easy to find, so you can buy these and try it at home. So now on my LED light, one of the legs is longer than the other one, and that longer leg is the positive side. So I want to touch that positive side to the positive side of my battery. You can see my battery has that plus sign there for positive. And when I touch those, and then I touch the two negative sides together, I turn my light on. Now for a fun project you can do with your tiny LED circuit. I'm going to take this drawing that I made recently during one of our Zoom calls, and I want to make my stars light up. I obviously did this drawing on scrap paper, but think of how awesome this could look if you do it on a painting or a piece of art made with a thicker paper. So all I've done here is I poked my LEDs right through the paper, and I've taped batteries on the back, and now I have glowing stars. You probably noticed that my LEDs are just taped to the battery, so to turn them on and off, I have to untape them. Can you think of a way that we can make a circuit with these LED lights so that they don't have to be taped and untaped to turn them on and off? How else can I change the design of the lights on my art? What are other kinds of art you think you can create using circuits and lights? Can you think of any other ways you can combine science and art? As always, you can send us pictures of any of your creations through Facebook, Instagram, or email.